All right, so now that you've done your first little practice part, let's actually create something in Fusion 360. Uh, what we're looking at here is a really simple uh, birdhouse. Let's make something just like that. So I'm going to start with a new design. Hopefully you have a nice clean slate like here, a nice workspace. Um, you may have your data panel showing over here. Uh, it's not necessary for the design, so I'm just going to kind of keep it off to the side so that I can focus on what I'm doing here. All right, so before I do anything, I wanna save this, okay? So I'm gonna to go to the save button and I'm gonna give it a name. This is a birdhouse, so I'm gonna go ahead and type in birdhouse and I'm gonna leave it under admin project because that's where I store all my stuff. Hopefully that's what you're doing as well and hit save, okay? And you can see it has changed it to birdhouse version zero. Actually now it's version one. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, one thing I want to discuss before I do anything is the importance of organization. Organizing your, your uh, designs as much as possible is crucial. Labeling things is crucial. It makes navigating the program easy. And we're going to do a lot of that in the model browser over here. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is single click versus clicking and holding. A lot of you are used to when you draw something clicking and holding while you draw it. That's actually a habit you want to get out of. You want to just do single clicks, move your mouse, and then click a second time when you're ready to finish a drawing. And we'll show that in just a second. All right. So for the purpose of making sure we're organized, let's go ahead and start with a new component, okay? This birdhouse is gonna have actually three components. It's gonna have the house itself, it's gonna have its roof, and then it's going to have a peg, okay? So these are actually three different components. Let's set it up that way from the very start. So to do that, I'm gonna make sure I've got birdhouse selected, which I do. Click Create, New Component, and I wanna go ahead and give it a name. I don't want to just leave it component one. So I'm going to type house, okay? Because this is the main part of the house. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see it's created a component over here. All right, let's start building. I'm going to start with a new sketch because we have nothing going here yet. We, we need to start with a sketch. And I'm going to base it off of the origin, as you'll see in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create Sketch. And again, we have three choices here, either this kind of side front facing, this side facing to the right, and then we have the base. I want the base one, okay, because we're kind of going from the bottom up. So go ahead and click on that. And as I said before, I'm gonna start off the origin. So I'm actually gonna click my scroll button and hold it down and pan off to the side just a little bit because I'm starting in that corner and moving this way. This gives me a little bit more space. And before I do any drawing, I need to change my document settings so that my units are not millimeters. Please don't make this mistake. Go to document settings, units, and then click on this little edit button here. And we're gonna change it from millimeters to inches because this particular drawing is gonna be in inches and select as okay. All right, here we go. Let's choose the two point rectangle tool. So just click on the rectangle tool. And as I said, we're gonna start from the origin and I'm gonna click once and let go. I'm not clicking and holding, I just clicked once and let go. And I'm moving it out like this. I'm actually not gonna worry about getting it perfect. You could try to get it in the right spot, but the easier thing to do is notice how two point, well, I moved it, but notice how 2.7 is selected or highlighted. I can actually just type in four and then hit tab on my keyboard. And that'll take me to the other number. And that one, I'm gonna click six and then enter, okay? So I've got a four by six rectangle, all right? So yours may be zoomed in, it may be zoomed out, but whatever the case, you want it zoomed in about like this um, and make sure it says four and six and then hit finish sketch, okay? Don't forget to hit finish sketch. Now. Right now we're looking directly from the top down. I want it in isometric because at this point I'm gonna actually extrude it and turn it three dimensions. So I like to do that in isometric view so I can see that it's three dimensional. So go ahead over to the extrude tool, click on it. And the only option to extrude here is that rectangle polygon you made. So go ahead and take our arrow and I'm gonna move it up 
and I just move it up a little bit. It doesn't really matter how much because we're going to type an exact amount. So let's type in 0.25. We're going to move it up one quarter of an inch, hit enter. Okay. And so we've made a nice base. All right. So we're going to build off of that base. All right. Um, this is still to me considered the house. So I'm not going to start a new component. If you really wanted to get detailed, you can change this to have separate bodies within the component so that some are the walls, some are the base, but to keep it simple, we're going to just leave this as the component house and build off of that. All right. So we're going to create another sketch. And what I'm going to do is click here and I want to make sure it's selected on the top of that base I just made. So we're coming off that extrusion. Now it likes to move it to the center of the origin. I want to move it back to what I have on the screen here. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Let's try a new tool called the offset tool. So if you click on that, I'm going to offset this outside perimeter. Okay. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to move the little bottom arrow in like this and you can see that the number keeps decreasing you can also see it's negative which is fine um, i'm going to move it and after the decimal i'm going to put 25 so it's negative 0.25 or negative quarter inch and hit okay and so it's created a line offset from the outside perimeter finish sketch don't forget to hit that and i want to point out something if i click this down arrow here now I've got bodies here. There's one body and it's also got sketches. Okay. And I've got two sketches, my original base. And now I've got the offset one. It's important because if you ever stop in the middle of a sketch and you need to go back and change it, you need to double click that sketch to get to back, back to where you want to be. For example, if I wanted to change that offset, I can double click this and now I could change my offset. Um, I could change it to 0.5 or 0.1 or whatever I want, but I like how it is. Always remember to hit finish sketch and I'm going to go to isometric again. So click on the little house up here. There's isometric and I'm going to actually zoom out and move down because I'm actually going to, I'm going to extrude this upward quite a bit. So I'm going to zoom out a good amount, go to the extrude tool and I'm going to click that outer border. Okay, not in here, not out here. I'm going to click here once, move. You can move your mouse with, with this thing here, but really you need to type in a distance. I want the entire house to be eight inches, and I know the base is already 0.25, so I'm going to put 7.75 because that with the base will make eight total. Okay, and then hit enter or just click OK. Okay, and you'll notice that it's created a nice box here. I can use my orbit tool here to, or my view cube to look inside of it. And it's looking good. Um, we're almost done with the house portion of this. The only thing I want to do next here is I want to create a hole here for a bird to be able to go in. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make one more sketch. So create sketch. Let's go on the front. Okay. If you remember isometrics, this is the side, this is the front. So let's go on the front. So click that plane and you can see it moves to the origin. We're gonna move this back down and I'm gonna kind of orient like that and zoom it in like that. And let's go to the circle tool, okay? Um, this is a nice, easy tool to use for holes and circles and curves and things like that. So go ahead and click on that. And I want this to be centered. So like, I know this is the center right here and I can move it down and start like that, but I could also put it over here and use my dimension tool later to center it. But since this is so simply set up, this is exactly uh, six inches here. If I hover around this line and move it over, eventually you'll see that little triangle up here. And that means it's centered or placed at the center point. So now if I continue to hover straight down, you can see it's staying centered. So I'm going to just move it somewhere around here. It doesn't really matter because we're going to set an exact amount in a minute. So click once, move your mouse, and I'm going to type in three. So three inches. I want a three inch opening and hit enter. Okay. So I've got a nice three inch opening and I want this a certain distance from the top. So here's where you come up here and click your dimension tool. So click on that. There's three clicks you need to make. You need to click the center, the top line here, move your mouse over here and click a third time to enter an amount. Okay. So one, 
to move my mouse over and click. And right now it's some really specific number. I'm gonna just type in two, enter, and you see the whole thing shifted up. It's exactly two inches centered from the top of the uh, birdhouse walls, okay? That's exactly where I want it. I already know it's centered here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish sketch. I'm gonna go to isometric by clicking on the house. And now I'm going to extrude that inward. Okay, so click the extrude tool. I have lots of choices to extrude, but I want to extrude the circle I just made. Click on it. Instead of arrowing out like this, I want to go inward. I can go as far as I want, but for now, I'm, I just need to go at least a quarter of an inch. And I've got it at a half an inch. That works. Hit OK. And you can see it's cut the hole there. Okay, so at this point, I'm done modeling the house portion. So I'm going to go ahead and save. So go up to your save button, hit save, and this will pop up uh, version description. Go ahead and leave it as user saved. Click OK, and you'll notice this will change to V2 in a few seconds here, I believe. That's taking its time. There it goes, V2. All right, so one component down, two more to go. All right, let's go back up to the birdhouse because we want the birdhouse selected when we make a new uh, component. So we're going to hover up here click on this little button here and now the the whole model is selected once it's selected then i can go to create new component and i'm going to leave all this as is i'm i'm going off the parent uh design here and instead of component two i'm going to call this roof okay because this is what we're going to do next okay all right, so now you'll notice that our walls are kind of like transparent now. That just basically means they're not selected. Um, they're kind of in the background, but we are gonna build off of them, which is pretty nice that we're able to do that. So I am on the roof. That's what I'm working on right now because it's selected and it's got the little dot in the, um, in the circle here. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose Create Sketch. Okay, I have a lot of options here. I actually wanna, select the sketch on the outside uh, front of this wall. So just anywhere in here, I'm going to select and you can see it's selected the whole thing. Okay. And I moved it back into position. This time I'm going to use the line tool. This is where it's especially important not to click and hold your button. So select your line tool and I'm going to start right here in the corner. I'm going to click once and I'm going to move my mouse over. You can see right there is six inches, which is correct. That's what we wanted. And I'm going to move it out to 6.5. You can also type 6.5, enter, and it's created a 6.5 inch uh, line. Now I want half of an inch on this side as well. So I'm going to go back to my line tool, start where this dot is, and I'm going to move it out a half of an inch. Okay, or type in 0.5 and then hit enter. Now move your whole thing down. Now here's where it gets interesting. First of all, I want to get off of the line tool. So if I hit, if I, if yours is like that, just hit escape on your keyboard and it'll get out of the line tool. All right, I'm going to select it again. And I haven't clicked anything yet, but I'm going to hover my mouse over this line and eventually you'll see that triangle show up, okay? So if you start from the left side and move it over, as soon as you get to that triangle, click, and then we're going to move up and we're going to move up exactly 2.5. So I'm going to type 2.5, enter. All right. And it's got a line that way. Um, just to show you what we're doing here, if I turn the whole model this way, I'm designing on the front. Oops. Let me go back to isometric. Okay. Um, all right. So let me go to the front. All right, let's finish drawing lines here. So go to the line tool. We're gonna go like this and like that. And then one more line here. We've got a roof outline and we are going to get rid of that middle line because we don't need it. So go ahead and choose a trim tool here. It looks like a scissors. And by the way, if that's not there, you can click the modify menu and find the trim tool. And I'm just gonna click on that line and it's gonna delete it. There's a little warning saying that uh, there was a dimension that was removed and that's because we had told it it was 2.5. That's okay that we're removing it as long as the triangle stays the same, we're good. Hit finish sketch, okay? And let's go to isometric. So you can see I've got 
my nice triangle on the front here. Okay. Um, if I scroll this way, you can see that it's lined up with the front. That's what I want. That's why I drew that off of the front. All right. So let's extrude that. So go to your extrude tool. We're going to hover inside the triangle, click, pull it out. Oh, let me try that again. Pull it out this way. I want a half an inch, which is where it snapped to. But if not, you can type in 0.5, enter. And then let's turn it this way. So we're looking at the back side. Hit extrude. We're going to pull it out this way. It snaps into place there. And then I want to go a half inch more. So it's a total of 4.5, enter. And now if you look at it, we've got a roof with an overhang over the whole thing. And that's really all we're going to do for the roof. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And this should change. Oh, hit OK. This should change to V3 in just a second. And you'll notice that now I've got sketches all over the place. If I want to be really organized, I can change the names of these sketches. Like for this one, I could put rename and I can type it uh, base. This one, uh, I believe, was a wall, so I can right-click and click rename and put walls. You don't have to do this, but I like to be really organized so I know where to go if I need to change anything. This was the hole uh, in the wall, so I'm going to go ahead and rename that hole. And this sketch is the triangle of the roof, so I can re rename that one. I'll just call it roof triangle. Roof triangle. And now I've got really organized um, design here. All right, so let's go back to our main model. So we're going to make that active. So hover over birdhouse, click the button here. Now the whole thing is activated. Let's do our last uh, component. So go to create, new component. And instead of component three, we're going to change it and call it peg. Okay, so this is going to be the peg the bird sits on. Hit OK. And again, it, it kind of transparents everything. We're going to come off this front face here. So go to create sketch. We're going to go off the front face and move it back into position. And we're going to make another hole in there just like we did with this hole here. So go to the circle tool. And this time we're going to be down here. Again, we want it centered. So there's a lot of ways of doing that. I can move it until we get to the center point, move straight up. But I just want it somewhere here, centered. Click, move my mouse out, and I'm going to type in one inch. So one, enter, and it's made a one inch centered hole. I want that in a certain position. So I'm going to go to the dimension tool. I'm going to do three clicks, one in the center, one off of the base, and then one off to the side here and type in two, enter. And it's moved it up two inches off the very base, okay, which is exactly what I want. Hit finish sketch. And I'm going to go to isometric. And I'm going to extrude that. Go to that hole. We're going to pull it out like that. And I'm going to type in three for three inches. So we have a three inch peg there, okay. Um, one last thing. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and put a little fillet on that. So if I choose the fillet tool, I can click on that outside um, edge. And I'm going to, let's see, let's type in 0 0.05. Enter. Okay. It just rounds it off just a little bit. You don't have to do that. I like the look of it. Um, okay. So we've got our peg done. Let's go ahead and go back to our main activate parent component um, and then click off to the side. We've got the whole house done here. So let's save because we're in a good spot. And this will go to V4. Now I can toggle things on and off. Okay, I can toggle off my roof if I want like that. Um, I can toggle the, the peg on and off. All right, that's why we do separate components. It's much more organized that way. All right, let's do some finishing touches. This is extra fun. You'll enjoy this. So let's go to Modify, and I want you to click down here on Physical Material. This is a birdhouse. We're going to make this out of wood, so we want to make sure we change this to wood. Okay, so if you go down here, you might have to select wood, scroll down, choose Red Oak. Very common wood to use. I'm actually going to drag that up here so it's in my material um, menu. And I'm going to actually 
pull that over onto the different parts here. So I'm going to pull it onto there, pull it onto there. That way I know everything that I have here is made of wood. All right, but I'm not done. I am going to close out the wood menu and I'm going to do something a little bit different. Let's go to modify and this time choose appearance. Okay, so we're going to put some paint on this. All right, and I need to open up my appearance menu. In case yours doesn't open, just look for the little arrows over here and click on them. Let's scroll down until we see paint. So there's paint. I'm going to choose glossy paint because that's more than likely what I'd use. And I'm going to use three colors on this. I'm going to use black. So let me drag that up. I'm going to use some green and I'm going to use some red. Honestly, you can choose any colors you want. Um, those are the three that I'll choose. All right. So they're up in my menu here. So there's a few different ways that I need to do this. So let's start with the roof. I want the whole roof to be green. Okay, so I'm going to just leave this on bodies or components, all right, because I want the whole thing to become green. So now if I drag it over, everything turns green. So if I look even underneath it, it's turned green. So that means the whole roof is painted green. Okay, next, we're going to move to wait, you know what, let's do the peg next. All right, so we're going to leave it on bodies. We're going to go to black this time, drag it over and click it on the peg and the whole peg turns black. All right, the next one, we're gonna do one face at a time for the body, okay? Um, so let's go ahead, this time click faces, and I'm gonna choose red for this. Again, any color is fine. And I'm gonna just drag it over to each face one at a time, okay? If you forget to choose faces and you leave it on bodies, it's gonna turn the whole thing inside and out um, red, which I don't particularly want. So I'm just gonna move this to the back. Let me move it a little bit more and drag that, drag that. I'm kind of particular, even though you can't see it, I want the bottom to be painted as well. Um, probably if nothing else to keep the rain from letting this rot. And then I actually want that inside edge painted as well. So I'm gonna drag that to that inside edge and there you go. And you'll notice the inside of the box is still wood colored, unfinished, which is what I wanted. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and close out the appearance menu, hit isometric. And there you have it. I've got a finished birdhouse. This is ready to put on a drawing sheet, which we'll do later in the process. Um, hopefully, you know that it's very important that I save this and leave it as user saved. And we're all the way up to version five because I've saved so many times. Saving is is a good thing. It's, it's going to make sure that your work is not lost. It's going to make sure that... Um, you're always where you want to be. So now if there's any time I want to change anything, like let's say I want the peg to be longer, um, I can go over to my peg menu, go to sketches. Um, actually, I need to double click the peg. And then I can go to my um, extrusion tool right here. And I can double click it and I can change it to four inches if I want. Okay, I'm going to leave it at three though. Oop, I put it at 43. Let me change it over here to three, enter. But that's how you get to those menus. That's how you get to different parts. And again, because I put this in separate components, I can turn off my, my peg if I want. I can turn off my roof if I want. Um, I can even just turn off the house and leave the peg in the roof. So it's much more organized this way. This is what I want. And we have a finished birdhouse. So hopefully you understood all that and you know what you're doing and you're ready to work on the next design. Good job.